Don't you think it's weird to make a voice recording when you're not speaking in your in your mother language? I am simply going to babble a little bit about what I did here. So it has been a while since I drew a map. So I finally took the time again to draw one of these maps. Now this is not going to be a tutorial video, just uh, showing you my process because there are many, many different ways you can do a map. And the first thing I did was decide on my media, what I wanted to use. And I, I wanted to make my life a little bit simpler and just use pencils and not fine liners. Although I also like drawing tiny little maps on small pieces of paper with fine liners. That's, that's good as well. First things first, we need to have the contours of the land masses. I've decided to have a few regions with which are a little bit more shadowed, like having small islands, having a lot of water around, and having two main continents, on the one on the left, one on the right, and um, a big sea surrounding those two, and having one big sea passage in the middle. So if you look at it, it's like it's a could be really nice for a pirate story because you have those those many islands, you have a lot of water, you have a lot of hideouts, you could have like pirate bases or have trading routes. And if you look on the on the bottom, there's a passage where you can enter this central sea. And there are a lot of tiny uh, islands and stuff, and I figured that this might be a part of the the map where only really good captains can cross their ships through, because it's very difficult to get past all the all the stuff that's in your way. So these are things you're thinking about when you when you're drawing a map. You can see how I use uh, this little line work around the borders of the land masses to indicate the, the water, the water masses. I think it's the easiest way to show water if you are not coloring it in. I drew in little mountains and trees. I do that, normally I do that kind of drawing a lot. And I like drawing them. And also as a, as a child or as a, even as a teenager in high school, I uh, created a lot of fantasy worlds. And the most interesting part about creating fantasy worlds are the maps and the creatures, creatures and cultures, depending on how far you go in designing. And then I, um, I used some, it's the first time I used this, as uh, shading for the, the land masses. I think it gives them a little bit more, they are more haptic, like they are it's not like the the water, which is consisting of uh, simply those those few lines, but the land masses they have they have texture. So yeah, basically that's every, that's everything that you would need for a map. Then I uh, added a compass rose. Compass roses, uh, you can find them in many different shapes and forms and variations with more details or less detail. I just like to have a very simple rose with the N for the, the north. That's what makes the, the map complete. The 
compass rose. I've decided to leave it at this stage. I was thinking about coloring it in maybe with colored pencils, but I decided not to because I like the, the simplicity of the map. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this video and uh, I'll see you while drawing another map again. Goodbye.